Internet, good morning. Daybreak Sum 48 coming back at you guys with a new video. Today, welcome everyone. You are watching the one stop shop for all things waifu, cardboard, know how. So, for any of you guys who are into, just or recently got into, Lycee Overture, Buy Shorts, Osaka, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, you name it, Pokemon, this is the one-stop shop for you. Maybe if you're a collector or you're a player, it doesn't matter. This video will give you the know-how to store your cards properly. So with that said, I'm going to move all of this out of the way for you. And we're going to take a look at each part of the, I guess, collecting world. So this will be a longer video. I will have everything timestamped down below. So if you want to watch a particular part, it'll be all nicely done there for you. With that said, give me two seconds and I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I got all of that crap out of the way. And first, we're going to start talking about if you are a player slash collector, this is your basic. This is your foundation. So first thing is first, these right here are all of your beautiful waifus and husbandos, whatever you may choose. And they are very, very fragile pieces of cardboard. And of course, with cardboard or any collectible, you want to make sure you're doing your due diligence to keep these things super minty fresh. So what do I do? I personally use for Vice Shorts, Pokemon, um, Lycee Overture, Osaka, all of those products are standard size cards. So this is the actual size that you're looking for. Now, these are what we call the KMC Perfect Fit Sleeves. They are what we consider the inner sleeves. Some people will use penny sleeves, but honestly, I like the tighter, more snug fit. And because of that, I personally will go with the KMC. Now, uh, can you use the penny sleeves? The answer is yes, technically speaking. But if a card, a piece of cardboard, which has holographic foiling on it, starts to move around, I don't care how nice or how smooth the surface is. If there's any sort of rubbing that's happening, you're going to know that there's going to be some sort of damage that's going to be taking place. So you definitely want to avoid any movement whatsoever. So, again... Personally, I use the KMC Perfect Size Fits, and this is the size you want when it comes to Pokemon, Lycee Overture, Vi Shorts, Osaka, uh, Magic the Gathering, stuff like that. Okay, now if you're into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, then you're going to want to look for the mini version of this. So just keep that in mind. Now, this blue one that you see right here, this is what we call an outer sleeve. So the way, actually... I'll showcase it here. So this one is one of my precious SPs, or this is really called an SBR for those of you guys who are interested. But anyways, it has a signature, so obviously I wanna keep this card safe. So as you can see, I already have the inner sleeve in. And the way I'm gonna do this is, as you can see, the opening is right there. So I put the card in, and then what this outer sleeve is meant to do is it's made so that it completely seals off the, the card from any outside elements. So no dust is going inside of here. Um, I don't want to even attempt to do this, but maybe some water molecules it will be able to stop a couple of those. But yeah, for the most part, this is double layered now, and it's pretty. It's going to be minty fresh as long as you're not bending the card, obviously. So there you go. That is what you want to do if you're a player. If you are a player, you double sleeve your cards. Even if you're a collector, you're gonna be double sleeving your cards for the most part. But yeah, that is how you make sure that all of your cards stay minty fresh. Now, real quickly, what products would I use for the outer sleeve? You could use literally anything you want. The outer sleeve is just an, another level. Now, if you're a player, then you're most likely gonna to wanna to use what most people use. Most people you use uh, Ultra Pro, this one right here. Now, something to note, these are cheaper, but they wear out faster. 
Now, if you're like Daybreak, I'm just gonna collect, I'm gonna put these in my a binder, then that's fine. This will do the job perfectly. But if you want something a little bit more resilient, this one right here, unfortunately, I don't have the box, but this is called the Dragon Shield. Personally, I love me some Dragon Shield sleeves when it comes to any decks that I'm utilizing that I wanna keep long-term when it comes to sleeve-wise. The Ultra Pro, after you go to a locals or a tournament, it might be kind of uh, a little funky. But the Dragon Shield, you could see multiple play uses and it's gonna stay nice and crisp. The corners are gonna stay nice and crisp. Everything is gonna just stay perfect. So there you go. Okay, so with that out of the way, now let's talk about storage for your Minty collection when it comes to your decks. Personally, I've said this in the past, but this is still my go-to. It is the ultimate guard stack and safe. I freaking love this product. As you can see, it's made up of a clear plastic and it has six compartments that can all store a 60 card deck that is double sleeved. As you can see, bam, right here. Now, the reason why I like this so much, first of all, is because of how it looks. You can look at your gorgeous waifus and you can put this in like a, a bookshelf or whatever and you know exactly what deck you're gonna be playing. Also, just the fact that you have six decks right here is awesome. Now, there is some negative negative aspects of this. For example, the first thing is freaking getting this item to your house. Unfortunately, because this whole thing is made up of plastic and uh, if you're purchasing this off of eBay or Amazon, usually those are the go-to places, especially Amazon, they will put this in a freaking bag and ship it to you. When you get this crap, before you open it, check to see if there's any cracks on the plastic because yeah, it sucks. As you can see, there's some stress markings here, but because it was just stress markings and not actual cracks, uh, I decided to keep this one. But that's the first thing. If you could go to an LGS and they are, have it there nicely packaged and preserved, then yeah, pick one up and just make sure. And if it's good, then you're gonna really have a good time with this. Now, something to note, I've made a video like this in the past. And I said in that video, the one thing I am concerned about when it comes to this product is after some time has passed, will the top give? Now this one, as you can see, I'm only holding the top here. Uh, this one is doing a pretty good job. Now if I were to start shaking it all around, then it, the lid might come off. The lid might come off. Now, I have experience, I'm just giving you an update here, that the older Ultimate Guard stack and safes that I've purchased, yes, the top has given out. So if you hold from the top, it's gonna come off. Here, as you can see, I'm holding it and it's fine. But the older ones, they will have an issue if you try to hold it from top. But obviously, just be smart about it. Uh, I personally will hold it like this at all times, even if it's a newer copy. So I just don't risk that. Okay, so now let me get the next part of this video ready for you guys and then we'll come back. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so welcome back everyone. The next part of this tutorial video is how to preserve some of your higher end collectibles. So as you can see, I have laid out a buffet's worth of different product for you and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each one so first thing is first i'm going to just take care of this part right here quickly this will be a separate video but this is what you call a psa graded card there's other companies that do something very similar to this like cgc and bgs and there's just a plethora of different services out there but if you want a third party company to come in and check the condition of your card, grade it, give you this beautiful little encasing right here, then you're gonna wanna watch that next video. So that video will come out a little later, but yeah, it is uh, something that newer collectors might not need to do at the start, but it is something that you wanna keep in mind. Now, as you can see, I have this little baggie on it, 
When it comes to PSA graded cards, they do not come in a baggie, so you will need to purchase one. This is the one that I like to use. Here are all the dimensions. Here's the information. I just got picked this up from eBay, and it's it does the job perfectly. It has a nice resealable seal here, so there you go. So again, this will be coming up in a future video. Now, on uh, going with that topic, when it comes to sending, submitting your cards, you want to use a Card Saver One. It's called Card Saver One. It comes in a package like this if you're buying uh, big amounts. But it's essentially a very, very pliable plastic that has an opening in the middle right here. Now, personally, uh, these are not great show pieces, to be honest with you. But I personally would like this more than the top loaders. We'll talk about that in just a sec. But anyways, this is what you're going to need to use if you're going to send out to those grading services. And as you can see, I've put a little sleeve... Uh, a tab here so the grader can pull the card without damaging it. But anyways, that is what you would use. Okay, so now on to if you don't want to get your cards graded, you have a couple of options. Now the first option that a lot of sports cards collectors will tell you is the Ultra Pro Top Loader Binder. Now honestly, I've said this in the past, I am not, I am not, I am not a fan of this product whatsoever. Uh, any top loader. It doesn't need to be Ultra Pro. It could be BCW. Uh, it could be literally any of those. The reason why is because I have one that I just recently opened. When it comes to the creation of the top loader, there's a bunch of plastic that um, the machine is literally cutting these holes, or even if they're not cutting it when it's completely made like this, they cut it eventually and what ends up happening is this is a brand new box and do you see that piece that piece is a huge huge issue the reason why i say that is because that my friends that's that's plastic that is plastic now if you take any top loader right any it doesn't matter what size it is if you run your finger on this opening here check to see it's not rigid, it's not like pointy, because sometimes when the machine is cutting this to size, it leaves debris on the actual top, the opening. So imagine this, you're taking a very valuable card and you're sliding it in and out, in and out. That's gonna damage the surface of your card. Now, this is a brand new, and, and to prove it, look how nice and clean that is, but, do you see the little specks in there? That, my friends, some of them are on the top, but others are literally inside. Like that one right there. Let's see if I put it in. Do you guys see? Oh, is it showcasing it? There's one right there. That right there is not on the outside of the car. I can't get it. Uh, it's right there. That is a piece of plastic that fell in when they were creating this. Now, again, if you're taking a valuable SP card of any kind and you're sliding it in and out, that's gonna damage the surface of your card. And as a collector, I can't have that. So if you are gonna go the top loader route, which is perfectly fine, you wanna first make sure that the opening is nice and smooth. And if you see any debris inside there, take a a small little like a Q-tip or anything like that and make sure you go in and get all that crap out before using it. Or do what I do, I literally just put them off to the side and use them as um, stacking material. <laughs> so there you go. But that is the reason, that's one way of uh, storing your cards. Personally, I'm not a fan of this but it is done quite often, so I want to showcase it. Now, once you have your card in a top loader that's minty fresh, what you will wanna use is this thing called a team bag right here. Now the team bag is this sleeve that I put it in so that my card stays nice and minty fresh. So, to be exact, we have the inner sleeve, 
we have the outer sleeve, we have the top loader, and then now it's in a team bag. So this thing is going to be preserved. And as long as you're not freaking bending the crap out of this, you, this card should be nice and minty fresh. Okay, moving on to some of my favorite, favorite items when it comes to storing my high-end valuables. So it is either the one screw down or the magnetic card holder. So the, here we go. In that previous collection video or how to store your cards video, I personally said that I love the one screw down. Now this is a 50 point card. Uh, what does that mean? It's just the thickness of the card. If you're doing Vice Shorts, Lycee Overture, Pokemon, you don't need a 50, you just need a 35. But the 50, is perfectly fine. It uh, gets the do job done and it's not that big of a difference. So and for, for me, some people want it to be super snug. So they will go with the 35, but the 50 seemed to work perfectly for me for the longest time. Now, when it comes to the one screw card holder, unfortunately, uh, maybe it's just supply and demand um, because most people have gone over to the magnetic card holder. And because of this, these are kind of harder to find. Maybe they just uh, stop making as much. But because of that, uh, yeah, I can't find these. So these are still my favorites. But if you can't find these, the man magnetic card holder does the job as well. Now, I just wanted to showcase this. When you get a screw down, what are you going to do? You're going to open it up just like I did here. You're going to take your card. Now, the cool thing is, you see this card? This is a Digimon card. It has the inner sleeve, and that's the same Cam C perfect size fits that I was referring to. And I'm going to put it in here. Make sure the corners are all recessed inside. From there, you're going to take this end, and you're going to just move it in, like, just like that. Now, you will need a little screwdriver for this, but it comes with a screw. So what you're going to do is just make sure everything is nicely lined up. Put it there. And just seal it away. Now, personally, the reason I like the one screws instead of the four screw, when you're screwing down multiple screws, the chance of the card slipping and sliding is very, very high. I don't like that. So the one screw and the two pegs right here, that does the job per perfectly. And as you can see, that card looks absolutely gorgeous. This thing is a very, very thick hunk of plastic. So you know you're not, your card's not gonna get damaged. Even if you were to drop something on this thing, I'm pretty sure it would stay safe. Now, this card is fine the way it is, but I, like, I want some extra protection. Now, to be honest with you guys, I think there has to be a better one out there, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to find one yet. I'm still using the team bag right here to store my card. So the way this works is I already have this one ready. So you're gonna take that team bag, you're gonna open it up, you're gonna put it in, and you see, I had to use a piece of tape because the, the one screw down is a little bit bigger than the actual sleeve itself. So it's uh, not gonna cover all the way. But honestly, once you have this thing encased, you're fine. I just like to have that extra layer because I wanna keep my slab as minty fresh as possible. So there you go. So that is the one screw down card holder, which is phenomenal. Now, the next one up is this one right here, and it is the One Touch Mag. This is pretty much many people's favorites when it comes to storing their very, very high-end collectible where you don't want to go ahead and grade for whatever reason. Now, the reason why this one was not as high up on my like list is because of the following. If you're only using the magnetic holder and that's it, and you're not using this outer sleeve, I've had scenarios because I have two young children where I would have this a card on display and they might tip it over. If that tips and it falls, this thing could just explode. And obviously, if it explodes, your card is going to go flying. 
there's gonna be some damage there. Now the screw down, the reason why I like this one so much is because it's literally screwed down like the name implies. So this thing's going nowhere. Yeah, it might, uh, there might be damage along the edges because it's hitting a hard corner, but that's where the perfect size fit sleeve comes into play. That extra layer should keep this thing safe. Now, with that said, the one touch Mac is fine as long as you're using an outer sleeve. If you use the outer sleeve because it's such a nice snug fit, if it drops, this thing is not going to open up because there's no room for it to open. And I think it just looks so damn nice. It's good. Um, personally, for a larger collection, because like I mentioned, I can't seem to find a lot of these one screw downs uh, in the size that I want. Uh, I have switched over to the one touch mags. Now, do I, if I had to say, if you were to ask me, Daybreak, which one would you go with? Personally, I like the one, the one screw down. It just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. But again, because of supply and demand, uh, I would go with this one because I just can't find it. As, as someone who has a little bit of an OCD, I don't like when, for example, a Vice Shorts card line has both screw down and a one touch it drives me crazy and so i've utilized all of my screw downs for my digimon card because it's a smaller collection that i'm not buying everything up so there you go okay so with that said let me now move on to the next piece of this little video okay so the last part guys or the second to last part is binders Obviously, if you're not going to go the route that we just talked about, where you're storing all of your cards in these very, very thick pieces of plastic, and some people just don't like the look of this because they want to be able to look through their actual collection. Well, then we have to talk about binders. So let's begin. If you are a newer collector, this 4x4 four four or 2x2 binder should just do the job. I have had this binder from Ultra Pro for God knows how long now, and it does the job pretty darn well. I have no real complaints with it. As you can see, the pages are still pretty fresh for such an old binder. So that's that. It even has this thing, which I hardly ever use. So there you go. Now, if you wanted to just bring a mini binder for like trade night or whatnot, this would be perfect as well. And it's not that expensive. Moving up and just kind of upgrading a tad bit, we have the nine pocket binders. And these are a little bit more awesome looking, to be honest. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still an Ultra Pro product. And because of it, the binder, the outer wall here is super flimsy. So if something were to, God forbid, fall on this thing, your cards might get damaged. But if you're handling your cards co correctly, you should have no issues. I mean, look at it. It looks so nice and clean. It's a side pocket binders. And honestly, I don't think anyone's making top loading binders anymore because those are just so outdated. But anyways, this will get the job done as you can clearly see. It looks great, feels great. Ultra Pro, I haven't had any issues. Now there's a lot of different companies out there. There's Vault X, there's Dragon Shield, there's Monster Binder, there's so many. You choose the one that you wanna go with. So do a little bit of research. Like I said, if you wanna go with me, I use the Ultra Pro for my not so high end cards and they have done the job perfectly fine. Now. There is one binder I would tell you to avoid like the plague, and it's the Monster protect Protector binder. Now, honestly, this looks so cool. Back in the day, Monster P Protector binders were so awesome looking because of this, but I wanna share with you something. This is not acceptable. Guys, do you see that? That is not acceptable. This one is, I've said it, I've had this for now over maybe a year. These right here, I've had since I was in like high school. <laughs> That's how old these two binders are. But this crap I purchased about like a year and a half ago, two years maybe at most, and this is not acceptable. I don't know what Monster Binder is doing. Uh, I think they were bought out by a different company who's just kind of milking it and it just sucks. Don't buy this at all. 
Okay, so what would I buy for like a higher end collectible? You ready? It's this bad boy right here. Now, this one, I'm just telling you right now, it is more expensive and it's hard to find. It's from Dragon Shield. Now, Dragon Shield is my go-to line for premium, premium stuff. I mean, first, I wanna show you guys how thick this thing is. Look at the thickness of this front page. Like, you could drop a laptop on this thing and nothing's gonna happen. This is where I store my my precious items. Anything that I want to preserve and I wanna make sure that nothing is nothing bad's happening, this is the binder that I go with. Now, unfortunately, just giving you guys a heads up, I feel like Dragon Shield has stopped producing these binders because even when I went on their website just recently, I couldn't find this model. Um, I see a lot of like regular just binders and they sell the pages. And it makes sense because these probably cost a fortune to make or more to make than that just outer shell with a bunch of pages. So. Yeah, but if you could find this, this is phenomenal. This is one product that I would always recommend, even for a higher price point. Okay, now if you're going the top loader route, bam, I've done a review on this thing. Uh, there's many different versions of this out there, but the top loader binder is pretty cool, especially if you're comfortable utilizing top loaders, uh, then this might be something you wanna go with, why? Because if you have a top loader ready, just like this one, you can literally put it in here and oh my goodness, now you can look at it like you would any other collection. Uh, so again, these are more premium items. Uh, I've, If you wanna buy this one right here, this one I got for $48.99, so pretty much $50, and it does the job perfectly. Uh, even though I am not the biggest top loader fan, I know when a product is doing what it's supposed to do, and this one sure enough does so. So there you go. Okay, now what about bulk cards or the cards that are not as high valued? Well, honestly, I keep them in these three ring binders. Now, something to note about three ring binders though. Be careful when you're using them. And why did my camera just lose focus? Come on. Hello? Sorry about that, technical difficulties. But uh, three ring binders, something you have to be very, very wary of. And that's why I said only use a three ring binder when it's like common cards, uncommon cards and stuff like that. And also just make sure you know how to use them. So these are obviously commons and uncommon stuff like that. Now, if you store this incorrectly, and this just so there's some pressure that goes here. The cards all along this right here, this metal piece is gonna get indented. You're gonna see that, be very careful. So what I like to do is I like to buy a binder that has a little bit more space as you can see, and I would literally have it storage like this, like that. So the cards on the bottom here are not touching right here once you put it, line it up, look, see? It is not touching. So there you go. So uh, I would make sure that happens and I would put it like that. Now, if you're gonna keep it flat on your desk like this, that's fine too. You shouldn't have any issues, but that's where I put it. Now, any other random bulk, I just put in a, a box. But when you're putting them in a box, guys, personally, I like to use these. So I will put like the, caught the same copy of a individual card, get all of those, put them in a team bag so they stay nice and minty fresh. Because who knows, some of those like 50 cent cards sometimes can skyrocket in price because of popularity and whatnot. And of course you wanna keep those safe as well. So there you go. And then the last part, for those of you guys who collect slabs of any kind. So the screw downs, the one touch mags, the PSA graded cards. This product right here is just literally a box. This box right here stores all of my SPs. And uh, what I do is I fill them in just like this. And I will, give me a sec, let me put this back in and I showcase it. Put this back in, it's a nice snug fit. 
there's a cover for it, so I'll cover this up. And then I put this in a, a Tupperware container or in a vault, stuff like that, because some of these cards are worth some pretty hefty pennies. Lots of pennies, actually. Uh, crazy amounts of pennies. So yeah, you want to keep them safe. So this is what I do. Now, unfortunately, if you are storing your cards this way, you can't actually see the cards. So again, personally, I tend to look at my Dragon Shield binders. Anytime I have a high-end collectible item, it's going to be the Dragon Shield for sure. Okay, guys. With that said, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come by and watch this long ass video. If you like what you saw, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, whatever, doesn't matter, you can leave it down below. Or if you want to talk to me in real time, uh, you could come find me on Instagram, my user handle is pokeycollect340 and yeah just message me there and i will talk to you so with that said thank you so much and until next time guys this is daybreak 748 i'm signing out peace